In an anti-racism training for white facilitators that I took this year, I learned about Dr. Martin Luther King's vision of beloved community. He envisioned an interrelatedness, a kinship among people of all ethnicities, classes, spiritual beliefs, and tribes. His vision, offered in the way that it was, with personal passion and tenderness, deeply moved and inspired me. And my own commitment and resolve deepened as a result of it. My beloved community includes all the whales and the sea turtles and the salmon, the egrets, crows, otters, and bears. It encompasses jaguars and cougars and bees and elephants, antelope and giraffes. The beloved community I yearn for extends to all the creatures and the plants, the oceans, mountains, rivers and fungi, <laughs> all of which are needed and all of which I consider sacred. Terry Tempest Williams in her book, Finding Beauty in a Broken World, speaks for such a diverse and wide-ranging community. She studies prairie dogs, keystone creatures upon whom many, many more depend, and among the most likely to face extinction in this century. They're being widely exterminated across the Southwest. Hundreds are killed daily, shot for sport or fumigated in their burrows. They live in community, with mothers sometimes suckling each other's young. Prairie dogs have one of the most complex language systems of any animal yet studied, and they have this disarming habit of greeting each sunrise and sunset, standing upright and stock still, their paws in a prayerful position. Native peoples understood their place in relation to the land, when the government agents proposed getting rid of the prairie dogs from parts of the Navajo reservation, the elders objected, saying, if you kill all the prairie dogs, there will be no one to cry for the rain. Where their burrows disappeared, the desert became a virtual wasteland. The ground became hard packed, unable to accept the rain. What ensued was flash floods, desertification and erosion. No one was surprised but the officials. Terry writes, the story of the Utah prairie dogs is the story of the range of our compassion. If we can extend our idea of community to include the lowliest of creatures, call them the untouchables, then we will indeed be closer to a path of peace and tolerance. If we cannot accommodate the other, the shadow we will see on our own home ground will be the forecast of our own species' extended winter of the soul. We're all indigenous to some place and have community embedded in our cellular and ancestral memory. In some deep corner of our hearts, don't we all yearn for it? <laughs> but in a quest for certainty, seeking some illusion of safety, criticism and judgments reinforce our separateness. The invisible stories embedded throughout our culture lead us to ruthlessly rank ourselves and each other hardening our hearts to empathic connection. Arrogance is arrogance, Terry writes, and cruelty committed to a person or an animal is cruelty. I believe it is time in the evolution of our imagination to make a strong case for the extension of our empathy toward the other, to regard any animal as something lesser than we are, not equal to our own vitality and adaptation as a species is to begin a deadly descent into the dark abyss of arrogance, where cruelty is nurtured in the corners of certitude. 
daily acts of destruction and brutality are committed because we fail to see the dignity of the other. We're hearing many stories from each other. May we listen with open hearts and ready hands. May we shed our certitude at the door and practice not knowing. May the soil of our souls be sown with seeds that expand our capacity for compassion, watered by the grief that strengthens our commitment and fired by the outrage that fortifies our will. May our roots entwine underground like aspen trees or seven sisters oaks, whose underground networks of connection offer the resilience to weather hurricanes and storms. May we leave each other with stories carried like seeds in our feathers, to sow them wherever and with whomever we next land. May we savor together some visceral taste of beloved community so nourishing, so enlivening, and so desirable that our hearts and hands take it on, and that the flaming light of our purposes will not be quenched. <laughs>